If you're a beach lover and you're coming to the Fethiye region of Turkey on a holiday, you might want to know where the best beaches are. Everybody has a different idea of their favorite beach. So in this video, we're gonna show you all the beaches in the Fethiye area, and you can choose which is your favorite and make a comment that might help others that are looking for the ideal beach, especially if you've been to any of them before. So let's have a look at the first beach. So the most well-known beach has got to be Chalish Beach. So this is Chalish Beach. It's a shingle and fine sand beach. And it's one of the most popular beaches because it's quite close to Fethiye. In fact, there's a cycle track that comes all the way up to Chalish from Fethiye. And you'll also get a boat taxi up to here as well from Fethiye too. So it's an ideal place for sunbathing. Unfortunately, this beach hasn't had great press recently because of the rubbish that's been left on the beach. And a lot of that is to do with smokers who are leaving their waste pushed into the sand and not using the dustbins provided. Maybe they should ban smoking on all beaches. That would be better for the environment altogether. It's got pretty good facilities. And of course, it's lined with lovely bars and restaurants and probably the best place in Fethiye to watch the sunset. To the west of Fethiye is a forest covered peninsula with several coves and well known beaches. So, this is Aksazla, and this is probably the closest beach to Fethiye town. It's a sandy beach, but the sand has been brought in. It looks a bit more like salt actually. And uh, although it's nice and gradual to go in swimming, it is a bit sort of murky the water here. But what a lovely place. And it's not that expensive to come in and use the beds. They've got a nice bar, nice restaurant area. And also they do camping here. And there's also a picnic place as well. And I don't think many people know about the camping here because there's no one here. To be honest, it's probably the best campsite near Fethiye. If you travel around the peninsula, after the Latoon Hotel, which of course has its own private beach and beach area, there is this little cove, which unfortunately seems to have been used as a dumping ground. There's a lot of boats started mooring here as well. But it is a free place where you could swim. So the next beach around the peninsula is this one, and this is Kachuk Samanlu. And this beach is privately rented off the government, um, but it's got quite good facilities. They've got a nice little bar, and you can even sit and smoke a nargili if you want here. They have traditional platforms here, what they call the kushk in Turkey. And obviously there's an extra charge for them, and there's a charge for the sunbeds. A bit further around the peninsula is a very special beach. So this is Buyuksamanla beach. Now this beach isn't quite finished at the moment, but because they're doing it up, and this is one of the only beaches in the area that's got a Mavi Bayrak or blue flag. It's a clean beach. It's rented by the Ministry of Tourism, and usually it's not open to the public because children come down here from that are at the tourism school. Um, but when the school's finished, they open it up for the public. This is all going to go on the beach, this beautiful white sand, which has actually come from Mersin. And in the summer, there won't be alcohol on this beach, unless you bring your own. And if you rent a kushk, you can eat and drink whatever you want from your kushk, of course. No bar here, but there will be a really lovely cafe, which they're constructing at the moment. So by the time this film goes out, they'll probably have finished here. So I'm excited because I'm definitely going to come back down to this beach. 
A bit further round the peninsula to the west is a Muslim concept beach. So this is Zira Kulisi. This beach is very special because they separate out the ladies, the families and the men. There's no alcohol on this beach at all. Next, about a mile away, is the very popular See Me Beach. It really is a lovely place. The, it's not a sandy beach, it's a sort of a fine stone, but they've got entertainment on here, they've got a bar, it's really something special. And to be honest, I think I'm gonna come here myself. In the next bay south of Simi Beach is another very popular beach. These beaches are usually accessed via the shorter scenic route from Fetier, turning left just after the Marina Boutique Hotel. So this is the Help Beach. The guy that owns this place or rents this place used to be in Ulladenis and there used to be a very popular bar then and it's still a popular place as a beach. This beach is very fine sand. I think it's been brought in. This is a really well organized beach with a bar and a lovely restaurant area. It's very busy in the midsummer with young people who like the loud music. The easiest way to get here is just to jump in a taxi. The last beach accessible to the west of Fetier is the private beach at the exclusive Hillside Beach Club. This is another blue flag beach. Unfortunately, you can only access it if you're staying at the hotel. Now let's look at the beaches to the south of Fetier. About a 20 minute drive away with a regular bus service from Fethiye is one of the most popular beaches in Turkey. So this is Ulladenis public beach which is famous of course for its paragliding and this is where they land when they take off from the mountain at Bobadar which is about 6,000 feet high. And it's nice to just sit at a bar and watch them all flying in. The public beach has got great facilities, bars, restaurants, all the way along it, and of course accommodation. So it's very popular. The prices right on the beach bars are a little bit more expensive than you'd pay in the normal resorts, usually between four and five pounds for a beer. But Uludeniz, which means Dead Sea in Turkish, is actually referring to the lagoon, which is the other beach at the end of the public beach. And you do have to pay to go in there because it's a national park. The public beach is fine sand and shale, but the lagoon beach is pebbles. But at the back of the lagoon, there's several other fine sandy beaches. All these beaches are accessed via the back road of the lagoon. Most of the beaches at the back of the lagoon are owned by hotels, but some are free access, so long as you use their facilities. You have to come through Kaya village to get to this one. About 45 minutes through winding roads.
So this is Gemelair Beach, which is actually opposite St. Nicholas Island. You can camp here, you can put a tent up here. But they do charge an entry fee, which is 75 lira at the moment for a car for a whole day. But there is some facilities here. There's a nice little restaurant. The beach is quite secluded, although there are lots of boats pulling in here all day long. And it's a nice place to hire canoes and peddlers. And there are boats from the beach here to St. Nicholas Island. Not forgetting that caravans and camping is allowed here and it's not expensive. Between Gemilair and Uludeniz there is one more beach which is accessible with a vehicle from Kaya village, although it's not an asphalt road and it's known as Cold Water Bay. This is a beautiful beach with a small restaurant which is high up overlooking the whole bay. The water is crystal clear and the ambience is lovely only spoilt occasionally when the dragon boats happen to call in from Eludonis. It's known as Coldwater Bay and this actually includes Camel Beach which is only accessible by boat. Heading south again and passing through Eladonis on the coast road, you come to another large sandy beach. This is Kudrak beach and there's a small entry charge to this beach. And the sunbeds and Koshk platforms are not cheap, but it is a beach with good facilities and a lovely shaded restaurant which also serves alcohol. The beach is fine sand but it's pebbles right on the shoreline, which means it's a little difficult to get into the water. This beach is a national park. It closes at 7 p.m. There's night security and no camping allowed. Just a couple of hundred meters away from Kudrak Beach is the huge, all-inclusive, adults-only Liberty Likia Hotel which has its own private beaches. These are only accessible to the hotel guests or if you buy a day pass, which is quite expensive. The next beach, which is only a mile further around the coast, is one of the most beautiful in the area, but it's only accessible via boat from Elodinis. Butterfly Valley or Kelebek Vardisi as they say in Turkish is a stunningly beautiful beach. You can rent a beach hut and a tent on this beach or take your own. And there are lots of boat trips, some very noisy, visiting here every day in the middle of the summer. But if you don't want a full day boat trip and you just want to visit or stay on this beach, there's a regular taxi boat service. It goes about every hour. It's not quite as smooth as the big boat. You can rent a beach hut and a tent on this beach or take your own. If you're thinking of coming over here to stay, the facilities are not exactly grand. And there's a small camping fee if you bring your own tent. But there is a bar at one end of the beach and there's some facilities at the other end of the beach as well. And be aware that the beach might not be as quiet as you were expecting it. There's a lot of people here The walk to see the butterflies is actually quite a long way, especially in the middle of the day in this heat. So make sure you take some water with you. The last beach that we're going to look at to the south of Fete is Kabak Beach, which is accessible from Uludeniz passing past Kudrak Beach 
through Feralia, which is high above Butterfly Valley, eventually reaching a point high above Kabak Beach. Then it's a steep track road down to the beach. If you are able, the walk down to the beach is actually very scenic. This is another beautiful beach, but unlike Butterfly Valley there is plenty of accommodation here from beach bungalows to nice hotels. And there's a nice large rustic restaurant and bar on the beach which also serves alcohol. In the middle of the summer there is sometimes a service bus to and from the beach. Hey, this is only a few liras. So now we're going to head back to the north of Fetier. Just north of Chalish Beach, the continuation of it comes into Kodja Chalish. So this is the beach at Kodja Chalish, which is an extension of Chalish Beach actually, but it's very pebbly up this end of the beach and there are several bars and restaurants. I'm outside of Zentaras at the moment, which has got sunbeds and lovely restaurant inside. But there's also this surf centre here and as you probably realised it's very windy here. It's a great place for surfing and the surf centre is a great place for learning to surf as well as hiring stuff out if you just want to go surfing yourself. Heading northwest from Kodjachalish on a back road you arrive at a small bay which is next to a much larger public beach. So this is Karatash Plaza or Karatash Beach. Now this beach is unusual, it's rented out, but there is one part of it, one side of it, that you don't have to have a sunbed if you don't want one and you can just, you're just free to come on. But it is a very lovely walk into the sea here. It is sand and shale, but walking in, it's fairly sandy and quite, quite easy. It's nice for kids as well. They do play music here at the little restaurant but you can ask them to change the music and turn it down a bit. And turtles do lay their eggs on this beach. Just 200 metres away over the small bridge is the other part of Karatash Beach. So this is another part of Karatash Beach and actually this is the long part of Karatash Beach but it's stony and the Fabe Hotel has rented part of this beach and they've put sand on it and made it uh, a bit of more of a luxury beach. Um, and this part is still public, but there's some construction work going on on a new hotel over here. And when that construction is finished, um, apparently they're going to rent this part of the beach as well. So it will be part of the hotel, unfortunately, because this was one of our favourite spots. And the restaurant at the back was one of our favourite restaurants too. Progress. Further up the coast is another hotel beach, but the best way to access it is to go back onto the Dalaman Road and turn at Yanukla. This is Tuana Hotel, and the only way you can access this is if you stay at the hotel or pay the daily fee because it's an all inclusive hotel. But just over a small bridge from this hotel is a huge public beach, a bar, and a restaurant. So this is Karaot Public Beach and this is right next door to the Tuana Hotel. Unless you come across the little bridge, walk bridge from Tuana, the only other way to get here is by car. It's a really nice drive for the car, although it is quite a long way. If you're coming from Fethiye, it's the same turn off for the Tuana Hotel, but you stay on the right side of the river. This beach is probably about five miles out of Fetier. And apart from the restaurant, there are good facilities here too. And right at the other end of the beach is a reasonable area for caravans and camping. Bear in mind that at weekends 
and the middle of the summer or any buy ramp periods, this area is packed with caravans. The last two beaches are even further away from Fetier on the Dalaman Road. To get to the first one, after passing Yanakla, you go up the hill and on the brow of the hill, there's a left turn to Katranja. This is Katranja Beach. Years ago, me and Trudy camped here with the kids, 20 years ago. There was nothing much here apart from trees and grass. And I think there was one tea shop. But now there's a lovely restaurant and many of the people seem to be staying here all year round. They've even got fridges and freezers outside their tents and caravans. There's also cabins that you can stay in. As with many of the forestry controlled beaches, they are sub-rented out to the bars and restaurants. So they do sometimes serve alcohol. And this one's no exception. So Katranja Beach, you can get a beer here and a restaurant meal if you want. It's a fine sandy beach and it's great for the kids, very safe. There is obviously an entry fee because it's forestry controlled, but the bars and restaurants are private, so if you want sunbeds and stuff like that, you, you have to pay extra. And there's some good facilities here. And for the final beach, going past Yanakla, up the hill and past the turn off for Katranja is a left turn to Gunlukla beach. It's sometimes called Kachukkaga. And it's also called Omer Eshen Nature Park. It's about 12 miles out of Fetia. So this is a lovely beach. This is Gunlukla beach, which is on the way to Gojek. And it's forestry controlled. So there's an entry fee. It's not that easy to get to unless you've got a vehicle. You could, of course, cycle if you're a good cyclist. And they actually got a bar and restaurant here. And surprisingly, they serve alcohol. And the beer's 150 lira, which is a little more than usual. But that's what you pay for a beautiful beach. It's very fine sand, which I think has been partly brought in. It is a nice gradual walk into the sea and they're also extending the beach so they're putting fine sand on the other part of the beach and making it bigger. There's also a lot more facilities on the other end of the beach which were being renovated when I was there in June. There are of course other bays and coves around the Fetier region. Many of them you can only reach by boat and some are quite dangerous to climb down to. A bit further away, about an hour's drive, of course, is Patara, one of the best beaches in Turkey. So that's it from the lovely beaches here in Fetia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss where we go next. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.